Hey all, it's Webcam Parrot here again, and you guys seem to really be enjoying the Lovecraft content recently, and so here's another one on the Cthulhu Mythos. This time I decided that I wanted to cover the enigmatic and powerful Great Ones of Lovecraft's writings, as well as some other similar beings like Nodens, Hypnos, and the Dreamers. I'm partly doing this video at the moment so that I can later talk about the Great Old Ones, which have a very similar name, I know, but are distinct beings from the Great Ones, and a lot of what I want to say about the Great Old Ones kind of needs people to know what the Great Ones are. Uh, the Great Ones are a bit weird as far as the HP Lovecraft sort of fan base or community goes, because nobody ever seems to talk about them. And a lot of quotes that talk about the Great Ones seem to be conflated with the Great Old Ones, like partly because they have such similar names. Um, so hopefully here in this video, I'll be able to make that more clear for readers. Identifying exactly what a Great One is is still sort of a challenge on its own though, with them rarely ever being mentioned or talked about uh, despite being directly related um, to the plot of so many stories, and are rarely given names. The names that we actually have for confirmed Great Ones, and you know, forgive me for any weird pronunciations as, as usual with sort of Lovecraft stuff, but those would be Lobon, uh, Nath Horthath, Ukranos, Tamash, and Zokalar. Uh, and these are the ancient Earth Gods, worshipped both on Earth and within its dreamland. At some point, these Great Ones were forced to abandon the Earth because of other more powerful and alien Gods, usually called the Great Old Ones. Often these are Gods of the previous rulers of the Earth, the Elder Things, but sometimes they're Gods of other races like a Bokrug was the God of a race of Lizard People, that are a bit more unclear, and I'll, I would cover more in a Great Old One video. Having basically given up dominion of the Earth, the Great Ones now reside at the peak of the wondrous and hidden mountain of Kadath, with these gods looking mournfully down at the Earth, which used to be theirs, occasionally sneaking visits when they can. In the Dunwich Horror, they are said to be not within the spaces we know, but between them. They walk serene and primal, undimensioned, and to humans unseen. Even Great Cthulhu, who is their cousin, can spy them only dimly, but that might just be because at this time, Cthulhu was greatly weakened for various reasons. Some powerful wizards might have the knowledge to summon these beings. Old Waitley, with the help of yogg -Sothoth, was able to create the Dunwich Horror, which would have eventually been able to presumably summon them to the Earth once again. Not long after abandoning Earth, they made some kind of horrible pact with the foul other gods, including Nihilethotep and the Court of Azathoth, for protection, presumably to save them from the alien gods who forced them off the Earth in the first place. However, this means that humans, even incredibly powerful ones, struggle to contact them too. In the story The Other Gods, we see Barzai the Wise in the Dreamlands, who is eager to track down and actually witness the Great Ones. Barzai is an incredibly powerful wizard, and is said to have guessed so many of the gods' secrets that he is considered half a god himself, and is able to make accurate predictions of the future, among many other miracles. Barzai believes that the Great Ones will next be seen atop the mountain of Hathek Kla, and so travels there to challenge them. Barzai is delighted to see the Great Ones there arranged in the clouds singing and dancing. He begins to cry out to them, saying, The wisdom of Barzai hath made him greater than Earth's gods, and against his will their spells and barriers are as naught. Barzai will behold the gods, the proud gods, the secret gods, the gods of earth who spurn the sight of men. At this, the Great Ones begin to panic, with the wise men believing that this is because they fear his power, which is greater than theirs. However, what they really fear is the arrival of the other gods. 
Barzai is sucked up into the Black Heavens, only to realize too late that he is actually being taken to the other gods and the ultimate chaos of Azathoth's court, which he describes as the vengeance of the infinite abysses, calling it a damnable pit and the outer hells which the gods of Earth are feeble in comparison to. The Great Ones are human dreamers proficient enough to attain godhood, which we can see most clearly with the dreamer Karains. Karains is an apt dreamer who has even travelled to the dreamlands of other universes with the aid of drugs, one of only four human dreamers to ever do so. After dreaming deeply enough, he was able to create the vast and infinite city of Selaface that he now rules as a god. Although never formally recognized as a great one or god, Hypnos and the narrator from the story Hypnos must absolutely count amongst them, or at least have a lot in common with them. They are both powerful dreamers and are amongst the four I mentioned earlier. They also heavily utilize drugs to reach deeper and more powerful dreams like Karain's did. Within dreams, Hypnos and his friend found great power and were able to prevent themselves from aging, remaining youthful and young forever, so long as they continued to regularly dream. After reaching these deeper, more profound dreams, Hypnos believed himself and the narrator powerful enough to become the ruler of all that exists, and that they could dictate the destinies of all living beings. However, on their next trip, Hypnos would accidentally cross into the court of Azathoth, seeing the other gods there, something that would haunt him for years and eventually killed him, turning him into a statue and removing him from the history of the world entirely when he slept on a particularly dangerous night. People have tried to use Hypnos traveling to the court of Azathoth as something particularly impressive, which it absolutely is, but not amongst dreamers. Most residents of the Dreamlands know about the ultimate chaos and actively choose not to go there. Only uninformed or foolish dreamers really go there. Uh, Karains is one of the first people to tell Randolph Carter about this, for instance, and there's kind of like this common notion that you just don't go to see Azathoth, like it's a bad idea, but that really anybody could if they wanted to. It's not like, a, like unaccessible, like only bad dreamers probably couldn't actually get there. Perhaps the most successful and revered of all the dreamers in the dreamlands, at least amongst humans, is Randolph Carter, called an arc dreamer for his great successes in the dreamlands. Part of the reason for his success is the use of a special cave known as the Snake Den that makes a deeper dreaming easier as well as later the Silver Key. Carter's dreaming was so proficient that even as a young child, he created the great dream city of Illic Vad, a sunset city of beauty and an earthly eminence so grand and wonderful that the Great Ones literally abandoned Kadath to live there. We are directly told that Carter is one of the only beings powerful enough to force the selfish Great Ones out of this city by Nihilethotep, admittedly, who is a bit of a liar. And actually, for that matter, the statement about him being an Ark Dreamer is also something we're told by Nihilethotep. But even so, creating Illigvad is itself an incredible feat, um, regardless of whatever Nihilethotep has to say about it. As an adult, however, he would lose these powers of dreaming and went searching for the Silver Key to regain it, implying that the Silver Key kind of has its own dominion over dreams in a way, although in this case what it actually did is just turn Carter back into a child, uh, but even so. Carter has of course travelled to the court of Azathoth whilst dreaming as well, admittedly with the help of a Shantak, however which is a strange type of mount used by dreamers for travel. And they're kind of like all over the place. They're kind of like horses, but for, for dreamers. Now, the last being that I want to talk about is Nodens, who is a bit of an odd one, uh, even in the context of this video, to be honest. He's probably not a great one and might not even be a dreamer, but I doubt another video would really encompass him as well as this one, and so I probably won't get another opportunity to talk about him, and he is well worth talking about. His servants are the Nightgaunts, 
creatures that basically every one of the dreamlands is scared of in some way. Partly because even thinking about them too much can cause them to turn up at your house. It's often said that even the Great Ones fear them, and they are called the Guardians of the Great Abyss. They are allies of the ghouls there, and fight regularly with the moon beasts that serve Nihilathotep. It's even stated that the Nightgaunts don't fear the influence of the other gods at all, including Nihilathotep, as Nodens is their master. Carter even believed that with the help of a pack of ghouls and nightgaunts, that he could defy the other gods entirely. Nodens himself only actually shows up once, and it's to completely annihilate a bunch of Nihilethotep's minions, the Hunting Horrors, as well as stopping the Crawling Chaos himself in the process. There's pretty good reason to believe that Nodens has power that rivals the other gods, and should be in the same region as, although admittedly still weaker, than that of Azathoth's power, which is one of the main reasons to think that he's not a dreamer at all, as the court of Azathoth is said to reside outside of all dreams, and Carter, one of the most powerful dreamers, seems to completely pale in comparison to even Noden's minions. Um, whatever Noden's actually is, he's a surprisingly powerful god, and it's possible that he's not even a human god, that he's the god of some alien race or something like that. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm thinking about covering the great old ones like Cthulhu in my next Lovecraft video, so look forward to that one.